birthday and we had the holidays that just passed so bear with us you guys we've been so busy reacting to the young boy story yes it's a reaction to his documentary so without further ado we're gonna jump straight into it in this particular place it was hard it was hard for real we didn't really have much now Kinchell was born on October 20, 1999, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He referred to Baton Rouge as a rare place with a different culture, like atmosphere, theater, and crooked police. He grew up without his father in the picture after he was sentenced to 50 plus years. His mother would move away because of this. She sent him to live with his grandparents on 38th and Chippewa Street at a young age with his half siblings, one of them being his older brother Pierre. Biologic is my real brother. When he was four years old, he fell off really? of a bed at his grandparents, breaking his neck. This forced him to wear a halo brace until his spine healed, which would leave permanent scars on his head. The young boy would stay in Baton Rouge with his grandma, who he says spoiled him whenever she could afford it. When talking of his grandma, he says she's the only woman he's ever really felt love from. I always stay with my grandma, like my grandma took care of me. My grandma gave me anything I wanted. My grandma made me feel love. And when she died, I ain't never felt that feeling again. Only time I ever feel love is when I walk on stage. Growing up, he was closest to his older brother, Pierre, who would have a lot of responsibility being the oldest of 10 siblings this and half siblings. When Control was seven years old, he came to Pierre on the porch with a notebook and told him he wanted to be a rapper, being inspired by his biological mom, who used to be a rapper as well. He started off writing in the composition notebook. He was on the porch. He came to me with this composition notebook, and he was like, you know, this is what he want to do. He began writing his first raps over the coming years, but was still a child and didn't take it 100% serious yet. As he and his brother got older, there's no question that the street life would influence them. But it wasn't always that way. In fact, they would try at an early age to make legitimate money by cutting neighbors' lawns for $7 each. This obviously didn't last long as it simply wasn't enough money to keep them out of trouble. You need a job. I like literally. They started stealing bikes and car batteries at a young age, eventually leading up to home break-ins. Kind of he would eventually drop out of school battery. in the ninth grade and start taking rap more serious. <laughs> this was around the time his grandmother would pass away from heart failure, leaving Kentro nowhere to go. Kentro would move in with his half-brother Pierre and Pierre's mother Monique, who would be like a second mom to him, That's even referring to her as mom. At 12 years old, Pierre and Kentro would be having a conversation about life when Pierre told him not to worry, we're never going to be broke again. This conversation would lead to the beginning of the NBA slogan, starting with just the two of them, and then expanding to his cousins and younger brothers as well. Monique, who saw the hard work they had been putting in, would fund their first official studio session, and also help them buy a microphone from Walmart. Looking up to other Baton Rouge rappers like Lil Fat, Fredo Bang, and G Money, who was one of his first mentors, he started to craft his style. Wasting no time, Youngboy put his first official song out on YouTube titled For A Reason. And you can see his potential even this early on. YouTube, YouTube, the only platform that I can just run to and, and drop and let you Cause you Cause you never know, really you have get, get whatever it is. Pierre, better known as NBA3, would take the role as manager in all things business. He started printing over a thousand CDs of young boys' music and passing them around Baton Rouge. This gave them their very first but also small fan base. Soon as Youngboy was really starting to consistently make music, so he would have his first run-in with the law, putting him in juvie for six months for a break-in. I ain't gonna say it was the best thing that happened to me, but shit, it hit me on my purpose. While in jail, he had time to write raps and work on his lyricism, so he could be ready to drop music on his release. While Three is promoting the music and doing the groundwork, Youngboy would be released from juvie and drop his first ever mixtape, titled Before the Fame, which was very fitting. Before fame was, was 
really everything. That was like, it was the breaking point of the whole NBA career, like never go again itself. When it came to work ethic, he looked up to rappers like Jeezy and liked how he was known for dropping back-to-back -back mixtapes. Oh, so he knew he, he wanted to do something Jay -Z. similar by flooding the streets with music. He spent the next year dropping mixtapes and trying to build a buzz outside his local area in Baton Rouge. Dropping Mind of a Menace 1, then 2, and later, Before I Go. By now he's gained enough credits to start catching the attention of mainstream artists and a much wider variety of fans reaching outside his home state. Kevin Gates and Boozy would be some of the first major artists to hop on a song with him and give him his first co sign Gates told me to keep working. Boozy. He just told me to show me some things. As well as Meek Mill, who is said to have been one of the first people to discover him and give him the name Youngboy early on. In October 2016, he dropped his breakthrough mixtape, 38 Baby, which should really be considered an album for how well put together it was. The tracklist included one of his breakthrough songs, 38 Baby, which would later earn him his first gold recording plaque. With the success of this tape, and a little buzz off some rap beefs, it would put his name into a whole new audience of people, gaining him a ton of new fans. Although he was only 17 at the time, his music sounded like it was coming from someone much older because of how raw, spiritual, and emotional cool. it was, which we can trace back to his very real childhood. This would be enough for him to catch the attention of multiple major labels, who would soon be calling. He would also officially change his name to Young Boy Never Broke Again to avoid any issues with the National Basketball League, although he's still considered NBA Young Boy to everyone else. In an interview with XXL in 2016, he stated, I'm going to be the next new thing that you see in rap. I'm a young boy. He's on November 28, 2016, NBA Youngboy was arrested before a show in Austin, Texas. He was booked for two counts of attempted first-degree murder and held what? on a $200,000 bond. Although he was only 17, he could be tried as an adult for attempted murder. He went from the biggest new artist in rap scene to possibly facing life imprisonment. Mind of a Menace 3 and Before I Go Reloaded which added up to over six mixtapes in a one-year span, something that very few rappers are capable or even able to get away with, two of them being released from behind bars. This was a scary situation, though. If Youngboy was convicted, his career and everything he worked for could potentially end. He would be held until May of 2017 for when he faced his trial. Fortunately, he was released after taking a plea deal and immediately dropped his single Untouchable, which had a lot of messages hidden inside it. One of them saying, I'll never jeopardize it again, where we can assume he was talking about his situation. At this point, what more could he have proven at 18 years old? Although that wouldn't be the last time Youngboy would get into trouble, he has not come close to being charged with something this serious since. In 2018, he announced his first studio album, Until Death Call My Name. It featured artists like Future, Birdman, Lil Uzi, and Offset, solidifying his spot in the mainstream. From there forward, Youngboy didn't even come close to stopping. He knew it was his time, dropping back-to-back -back mixtapes and EPs where he would go platinum in the streets and then platinum on the charts. I just knew at one point, it wasn't no stopping me. You hear me? I, like, I knew that this moment was gonna come, nigga, to put me right there with you. Today, Youngboy has more gold and platinum plaques than you could probably imagine. And he has been consistently the most viewed YouTube artist for over two years straight, pulling over 50 million views a week. There's no denying what Youngboy has accomplished is insane. All of this happened while spending a majority of his career either locked up or on house arrest, showing us nothing is impossible, even at a young age. But it wasn't easy. That's sick. That's sick, bro. Fucking clown. He's a clown. That they definitely be stuff. surprising y'all. That is insanely crazy. Thank y'all for viewing this video. Thank y'all for watching, you guys. Make sure y'all please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe if you like what we're doing here. And I'm finna eat some leftover Thanksgiving food. We're gonna eat leftover Thanksgiving food tonight, y'all. So make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And ring that notification bell without further ado. Peace.